Hello everyone, my name is Joe Pusateri and I am living the sober life. And today I would like to talk about uh, the 12th step. I have recorded two videos already, so this will be the third video about the 12th step, the third part. And in this video, what I'd like to talk about is the element of practicing these principles in all our affairs. So the 12th step as a reminder again is having had a spiritual awakening, pause, spiritual awakening, vital spiritual experience, psychic change, pretty much all the same thing. And that we believe is what is necessary for real addicts and alcoholics, people that uh, need uh, alcohol or drugs in order to feel normal or to try to feel normal, who, when you take the drugs and alcohol away, actually get worse, not better. Having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, pause, these steps or the previous 11 steps, all right, uh, tried to carry this message. This message is the message of the previous 11 steps uh, to uh, addicts or alcoholics. And then here's the part I want to talk about. And to practice these principles in all our affairs. So one of the things that we recognize when we try to get sober is that this ain't just about the drinking and the drugs. Um, And we figure that out pretty quick. So when I first was trying to get sober, and I'll be honest, I didn't think about it this way at the time. But looking back, it's quite apparent. I would have been completely and totally satisfied with the same crappy life that I had. And when I say crappy, I don't mean to sound overly ungrateful. I just mean that, like, I had no particular sense of purpose or direction. I wasn't, you know, contributing to the stream of life. I didn't feel deeply fulfilled in some profound spiritual way. I mean, I would have settled for the same mundane, average, going nowhere life just without the alcohol. You know, I didn't need another job. I didn't need anything else in my relationships. I didn't need anything else in my life. I just, all I really wanted and I would have been satisfied with is to just take the alcohol away and to take the, you know, any substance or activities or behaviors that was destructive to just take those away and then I would be fine. And had that actually occurred, and and had that actually become my story, I would have sold myself so short because the life that I have today is so much better than I possibly could have dreamed of or imagined. And in fact, the life that I have today would not even really have made much sense to me at the time. So it was, uh, you know, very fortuitous to me that it was not revealed to me all at once, that it was just little bits and pieces at a time. So, Uh, I say all that to say this, that when you get into recovery, you find out quickly that this just ain't about getting rid of the drinking or the drugs. Getting rid of the drinking or the drugs for people like us, and like I've said before, actually makes things worse because you've now taken away the one thing that we have reliably used to treat the underlying problem, which is the fact that we are wired in such a way and been conditioned in such a way and see the world in such a way that we are chronically restless, irritable, and discontented. It's not just about the drinking. It's not just about the drugs. It's about a whole new way of living life. And as we peel back the layers, as we take away the drinking and the drugs, we find there's all kinds of stuff going on underneath. More specifically, resentments, relationship problems, um, all kinds of self-esteem issues, I mean, like there's just the the full gamut of problems when you take away the drinking and the drugs and those things have to be dealt with. And the way that they are dealt with is to practice certain principles. Now, uh, somebody has actually gone through and identified all the principles underlying each of the 12 steps. And I don't have those memorized. I think that's wonderful, but so I won't go through those one by one. But I will tell you that they include things like honesty, integrity, humility, hard work, compassion, you know, things like that. And 
and what we find is uh, through the steps, we have to work those principles. So in order for me to not drink, I have to face my uh, character defects. And facing my character defects takes courage. Okay, that's one of the principles of the 12 steps is to have courage. And when I have courage inside of my program, I'm able to find my character defects and then do something about them. You know, in order for me to uh, come to believe that there's a power greater than me, you know, as if that should be such a novel concept that I'm not the most powerful thing in the universe. But, you know, if I'm going to accept the idea that there's a power greater than me, that requires humility. If I'm going to help other people, that takes compassion. If I'm going to admit, you know, that I'm uh, an addict or an alcoholic and that I'm in need of a power greater than myself, that, of course, is going to take uh, honesty. And so in order to stay in my lane in recovery and stay away from a drink, I have to practice certain principles inside of my program. And what the 12 steps is, is that those principles have to extend to the rest of our life. Okay. In the beginning, I set the bar really, really low for somebody I might be sponsoring. So you come, you know, some guy comes in, his, his life is obviously a wreck and he's got all kinds of issues going on. You know, my, he says, my marriage is, is a mess. My wife is about to leave me and they're, they're going to fire me at my job. And, you know, my kids won't talk to me. And, I got all these problems. These people are trying to control me and I owe all of this money. And, uh, you know, I I, got to deal with this and the law is after me and there's a warrant out for my arrest and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it'd be easy to look and say, yeah, man, like (laughs) your life is a wreck. Uh, And I don't know what to do. I don't know how you straighten it all out. Uh, What I do is I just try to break it down to the thing underneath the thing, underneath the thing, underneath the thing. It's like, you know, we're just going to assume that among all of your problems is that you drink too much or you use drugs. And what we need to do is we need to deal with that because if we can, you know, just put all the other stuff aside, you know, you're, you're not going to fix your marriage by next week. You know, you're not going to fix your job situation, you know, uh, immediately. We're, we're going to just try to not make it worse. And the way we're going to try not make it worse is we're going to try to stop drinking, right? We're going to try to stop uh, using drugs. And if we just focus on that, just stop drinking, just stop using drugs, and let's see what happens initially. Probably some of those problems, not all of them, maybe not even most of them, probably some of those problems will disappear on their own. If you stop drinking, if you stop using drugs, maybe that is the problem. It's just manifesting itself in in a certain way. And if you just stop drinking, those problems will just disappear like magic. All the other problems will probably be easier to assess and easier to deal with once you've gotten sober. Let's just say, I don't know what the solution is to your legal problems, but chances are a sober mind is going to have a better shot at figuring that out than a drunken mind. So let's just get sober first, then we'll go back and deal with it. And I find that that, you know, usually is the case that maybe the problem doesn't go away when you stop drinking or using drugs, but whatever the problem is becomes a whole lot easier to deal with. Okay. I set the bar low and, uh, and I say, whatever else is going on in your life, let's not worry about it. Let's just get sober. And then progressively as more and more sobriety is introduced into one's life, the more one will realize that they need to be doing more things in other areas of their life to maintain this spiritual awakening and to maintain this condition called sobriety or or recovery. That it's not sufficient just to take the alcohol and drugs away. It's not sufficient to just restrain oneself from becoming intoxicated. That in order to stay on, you know, in order to stay sober, you need to be doing other things in your life. Over time, those principles of honesty and courage spread further and further out into your life and the bar gets higher and higher and higher. And if I'm sponsoring somebody and they're two, three, four, five years sober and they're lying on their taxes, 
come on, man. Like that's just, that, that is a disconnect. You know, you can't be honest and rigorous when it comes to your character defects with your sponsor and you can't be honest and rigorous in a meeting uh, of, you know, a 12 step meeting and then go and cheat on your taxes. Like that's going to get you drunk because there's a disconnect. You're acting one way uh, in this situation and you're acting another way in another situation. So we need to have some integrity. We need to be a total, complete, you know, comprehensive picture here. And that's going to require, you know, that we become honest in every part of our lives. When you live the kind of life that I think people in recovery are called to lead, then that becomes a light, you know, and 12-step recovery is not evangelical in the usual sense. So, you know, religious organizations will be evangelical in the to the degree that there is a dimension of like active spreading a message and recruiting people and uh, and engaging in that kind of activity. And whether or not that's wise or is, is another issue altogether. So we won't go into that. You know, suffice it to say, 12-step recovery is not like that. Our marketing strategy is basically to just live the life. And if you just live the life of honesty, integrity, compassion, humility, if you just live your life, I promise you that people will see that, they will recognize it. And for those that knew you the way you used to be uh, as a crazy addict alcoholic, I promise you that will become an attraction. And people will ask you, you know, what did you do? How did you change your life? And uh, that's an opportunity to, you know, to share that message. And if there are people who need that message, if there are people who are struggling themselves, they're far more likely to approach you and to ask you for guidance or direction uh, than they would if you were beating down their door saying, hey, you need to get sober. So that's one of the beautiful things about the 12th step. All right, so I have talked a lot about that in three different videos, and uh, so I'm going to end it there. Take care. God bless. The next series of videos will not be the 12 steps per se, but they will be something about living the sober life. And for those that knew you the way you used to be uh, as a crazy addict alcoholic, I promise you that will become an attraction.